here is the 21st of January 2022 and I think we're all past the new year um malaise back into work raring to go and tonight is going to be absolutely fantastic uh, before we get started if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe if you are returning please share the channel with your friends uh, this evening we've got a very special guest who we'll get to in one moment um, if you feel that you can uh, contribute to the channel, you feel that uh, you enjoy this programming, then please consider uh, leaving a tip using the QR code in the top corner there or the link in the description below. Um, so tonight's guest, um, as has been advertised all over the internet this week, we are having prophet and first elder of the restored branch of Jesus Christ Church. Uh, right here in Derbyshire in the UK, and that's Matthew P. Gill, and uh, I'll bring him in now. Hi, Matthew. How are you doing? No, very well, thank you. Good stuff. Uh, Good thanks so much for being with us tonight. We have, um, yeah, a plethora of information to get through uh, this evening. So it's going to be a whistle-stop tour because there is so much around this um, and so much to get through that, yeah, we're, we're going to touch on a lot of topics. We're going to look at uh, uh, the modern day scripture of the Chronicles of the Children of Aranak, where that comes from, what the translation process was, what it actually consists of, and what it means for the restoration movement in the 21st century. So we'll begin where we always begin, though. Well, I guess there's some questions about that, isn't there? But we're going to begin with uh, your temporal um, beginning here on Earth. Um, so you were born in Derby, uh, but moved no, south. I was, born, I was born in Birmingham. You were born in Birmingham. Oh, you're a brummy lad. Are you a blue nose? No. People won't know that <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Doug Vincent already chimed in. Doug, you have God to thank because uh, he said he already liked the name better than the Book of Mormon. Um, the, the name was uh, commanded by God. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, born in Birmingham, grew up uh, sometime in Derby, then in um, Tamworth, which is about okay. half an hour, 45 minutes south of Derby, right in the middle of England um and you had a pretty much a normal uh kind of cookie cutter mormon upbringing parents right. were both active in the church right so yeah i mean um as you say born in birmingham um raised in tamworth and um stayed in tamworth until i went on my mission and then of course we moved to derbyshire but my, my upbringing is pretty much like you said, a, a, cutty, a cookie cutter Mormon. Uh, my parents were both members. I was born into the LDS church, baptized at eight, um, you know, attended primary youth program. Um, I mean, everything, everything is probably the same as most members up until uh, I went on my mission, really. So, yeah, well. You went on your mission, but previous to your mission in yep. your youth. Um, so I'm going to, I guess, give the brief account and okay. then we'll allow you to expand upon upon what happened there. Um, so uh, to set the scene, Matthew's 12 years of age and hasn't yet read uh, the complete Book of Mormon, which is no um, great sin when i was 12 i don't think i read so i was on my mission properly <laughs> so um you decided it was time to read it and figure it out for yourself right um so you you went to bed you told your dad you took some snacks with you and you said yeah right i'm gonna read it all night like all 12 year olds do you just like i'm gonna do it i don't care what you say um and i'll let you tell us what happened next yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I was just obviously I, I'd read parts of the Book of Mormon as you do in primary, don't you? And uh, I just moved into the youth program, so your, your scripture load becomes slightly more exaggerated than the primary program. 
So I was just very curious about reading the whole thing through for myself. And I just made a decision. I took one of the blue, blue back Book of Mormon, you know, the old thick blue ones. Yeah. And off the family bookshelf and said to my dad, I'm going to go read this. Um, and then I think I'm going to read the whole thing like most enthusiastic kids do, you know, not knowing how hard this is going to be. Um, so um, my dad was all for it. And he said, right, well, I'll make sure you don't get disturbed. You know, you've got time to yourself. So, you know, took snacks and drink and, 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 and basically uh, read most of that day. I mean, I've never had trouble reading, so it wasn't like a big chore. Um, and I read, I mean, all the, I mean, I read through most of the day, um, you know, bathroom breaks and stuff and, you know, moving about. But um, I got through a fair chunk uh, of the Book of Mormon. Um, and then I decided, then I decided to stop. Um, I can't remember where, but I decided to stop. I think it might have been just before uh third knee five maybe and i i just had enough and said you know enough's enough it's getting late on wrecked <laughs> so you know i'm gonna go to bed and as i went to get up to go and you know turn all the lights out and whatnot i noticed i couldn't move from my bed and uh it felt like a a, a weight on my chest and uh i couldn't breathe properly and i, I it, it was very uncomfortable and I was really shocked, and I just, I just basically said, you know, God help me, <laughs> get help me out of here. So um, that 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 lifted, and I got up, and uh, and then I said, well, yeah, you know, I'm going to read this thing through. And uh, I mean, I, I would say I finished like into the next morning, and um, uh, it wasn't really a a big chore for me so um and then of course after i'd read it i prayed about it as i was instructed to do okay. or as maroon i instructs you to do and um that's when i had the experience and i noticed as I, as i was praying that the room began to get lighter and uh, I'll, I'll, i know i i, I I noticed, well, I didn't notice it. I felt, I felt a brightness coming from the right side of the room, an intense brightness, and um, that's when I opened my eyes and saw uh, descending from just out of like a like a portal, I suppose, just descending the angel or an angel. Didn't know who it was until he, he was in the room, and I saw he was holding the plates, the golden plates uh and um that's when he started to talk to me and instructed me to come and and and, and, and uh, feel and, and move the plates which which i did and uh the last thing he basically said to me was um one day one day you're going to have a work to do similar to to joseph who who, who bought this for okay and and uh you know i'm only 12 so i at the time i don't think that sunk in as much as it did later on in life but um and then and then of course after that was done he told me to behave myself be a good boy you know uh, don't don't do anything that would compromise my morality or anything like that uh and then and then and then he he went and the light gathered in around the, the angel and he ascended back the way he came and I was left in the room. And uh, after I'd gathered myself from that experience, I can't tell you how long it was. Um, I went to see my dad and told my dad, and I was knocking on his door, dad, you know, this has happened, dad, you know, and we had a chat and we decided um, that I would tell my bishop. So I did. And, uh, Apart from a few people, very few people, I didn't really tell anybody. It was it was like it was more like my dad recommended we tell the bishop because he was the bishop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and I didn't really. I mean, I told I 
I told a few people, but I didn't bandy it about. It wasn't something I was going, oh, look at me, you know. So it wasn't like that. It was a very, it was a very special uh, spiritual experience that I didn't want everybody else to be jumping on the bandwagon of and oh, you know, well, this isn't true. Well, I did anyway later, but at the time as a twelve-year-old, you just don't want to hear that. Um, okay. So that's pretty much it, really. We just take we take a step back, right. and if we take Mormonism out of the equation in this whole experience did anyone suggest that um, there might be um, a psychological element to this at that time because the the culture of mormonism makes that seem not so nuts if you know what i mean but right. in the world in the world outside mormonism right they would send you to a doctor well yeah you know what but i mean I was, yeah i was mean there anything no, I mean, I, as I, I certainly didn't tell my non-religious friends, and I had plenty of non-religious friends who I went to school with. I certainly didn't tell them about it. I, I was conscious at the time. Obviously, this isn't something that happens to everybody every day. Although, as you say, in 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 Mormonism, or at that time, as I knew at the LDS Church, uh, angelic angelic visitations and ministrations are spoken of all the time. It's something that you know you you knew was could be a possibility. Not that you thought about it any, any time. And I certainly didn't tell anybody outside my religious uh, sphere about it because you, as even then you know, even as a kid, that you're going to get ridiculed. Oh, he's lost his mind or whatever. Um, so, um, no, I didn't. That didn't really happen. It didn't really okay. occur. Okay, so that's what is classed as your first vision uh, right. when it comes to church. And for anyone. Um, wondering in the description below there's a link to several things there's a link to the restored branch of jesus christ website where you can find all this information uh where i've sourced most of the information um as any church would say where's the best place to get the information on the church's website lds church's website it's a bit suspect but there's also a link to uh the restored branch of jesus christ youtube channel so you can watch some of the videos uh, that Matthew's put up there with some of his sermons where he speaks about the translation process in more depth than we'll probably get into this evening. Um, and there's also a link to a Google Drive, and that's my Google Drive. And I've popped in there um, just a couple of resources for you to follow along with this evening. Uh, one is a map uh, that we're going to look at in a little while when we talk about the journey of Jerinac. Hopefully I've got it right will be corrected if not um and another are the the show notes for tonight i thought i'd put them in there because i spent about three days writing them so you can you can all see um if we don't get through all the detail it's it's all in that folder um or if matthew wants to look back later and see uh my heresy um then it's it's all there okay so moving on you uh, you've had this vision when you're 12 your priesthood leader has asked you to be quiet uh, yes. and you've, you've spoken with your dad about it and you've not been given any particular instruction other than to um, just wait, right. await uh, further instructions. So sure. you carry on with your uh, Mormon life. Go on a mission, Dublin, Ireland. Which year was, right. what years? Which year did you go? 97, December 97. Okay, cool. I've got 96, but that's because my private investigator is um, dyslexic, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> that's me. So uh, 97, <laughs> you go on your mission to Dublin, Ireland. Yeah. And then following that, uh, you meet your wonderful wife. Yes. After, yes. When I came back off a mission, I went to work for the distribution center in Birmingham in, in Garrett's Green road or lane whatever it's called okay. and uh, and i met her whilst i was working in the lds distribution center yeah okay and continued on to get married uh full yep. temple marriage right. and we're we're just living the standard mormon the life standard LDS dream, yeah. <laughs> the standard lds dream we're living yeah yeah we're we're married we're we're enthusiastic um and 
they're trying to make a family and you know we're doing all the right stuff so yeah cool. and i'm just waiting and and to be fair um uh i i didn't really give much thought to to when it was going to happen it was just always in the back of my mind but it wasn't really at the forefront of my mind okay uh, just before we move on um mark johnson's asking were there any inside stories for working for the church and the distribution center oh yeah <laughs> any that spring to mind oh good grief uh it, health and safety never occurred in the distribution center warehouse where i was i, I was driving i was driving a forklift and um playing pranks health, and stuff health and safety rules aren't required garments are bulletproof <laughs> yeah um, uh... yeah oh there was all and there was all kinds of waste i mean uh every, like every couple of months or so you go through all the all the all the stuff that wasn't relevant anymore and you chuck it in the big green bins and like you'd spend like half an hour after work and finish going through the bins like you could take scriptures pictures oh it was like a free-for-all it was nuts okay well moving on from that because DJ Norman has asked, has uh, Prophet Gill met Joseph Smith? And we are about to get there. Um, so we're, we're going to speak about two more visions, uh, DJ. But um, yeah, that, that answer to that in short is yes, but we're about to find out how. So okay. we come to October 2005. Right. Um, for your second vision, where you meet the angel Raphael for the first time. Right. So, so leading up to uh, that visitation, um, uh, I prayed that night. Um, just basic stuff like, am I doing everything I should be doing? Am am I am I reading the right things? Am I on this path? Am I, am I still worthy of attaining whatever it is I'm ready to attain at some future point? And, uh, and that night, that, that visitation happened. And um, during that visitation, um, I was told that um, there were, yes, don't worry, it's going to happen, it's going to come forth. However, there are certain there are some things that you need to do and um i was given some scriptures to read um that night and and subsequent other uh um visitations i was told to read other things um, um i was told to read section 20 doctrine and covenants Third Nephi, um, I was told to um, um, get hold of an inspired version of the Bible, which, I mean, let's, I, I'll be totally honest, I, I had no idea, apart from the, the little sections in the LDS scriptures, that there was even an inspired version of the Bible to get my hands on. When you say the inspired version, we're talking about the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. Right, right. The complete, yeah. the complete. And I, I had no idea that 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 even existed. I knew there were sections because you know we we have them or the LDS have them in uh, sections in the Pearl of Great Price. Right, right. So I knew they had sections, but I was totally unaware that they had like a, a proper book, like a complete book. And so um, anyway, I, I I got hold of that, and I, I was told to read the first seven chapters of the of the inspired version of the Bible, compare them to what I was reading at the time, see where the differences were, why there were differences. And I was asked to do, not just on that one visit, on subsequent visits, different things. So I was learning and, and growing over the period of time before uh, uh, um, July 2006, uh, when I uh, saw Christ and Joseph Smith. So. It, between October 2005 and the 12th of July 2006, it was just a learning process. Okay. Well, let's, is, the let's... Sacrament, is, the sacrament, is the sacrament being conducted properly? Do you know that? And, 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 like that. 
and I know that was that was almost the uh, the shelf breaker for you, the sacrament. Right. So in in watching uh, a video where you're having a conversation with your dad about leaving church, is that previous to your third vision? Is that in this in between time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I know you say you were you were in um, the normal LDS church meeting at the Derby Chapel, partook right. of the sacrament. Right. But you were particularly, I guess, aggrieved about what was happening with the sacrament, and you had. Right, to... I was. Yeah, I was attending. I was at, while these visitations are going on. I was still attending church, and every and, and the more and more I attended church, and the more and more I was told to go and read stuff, the more and more and more problems I would find, and become agitated about. And the the the, the icebreaker for me was that sacrament meeting. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were on the pew on the right hand side of the chapel. I was right next to the wall, so it was hard for me to get out of that meeting because all my, my parents and my wife and my you know, my my kids, my, my boy was there. So um and they were doing the sacrament and the the the, the I knew straight away that it wasn't right. Something something said to me, This isn't right, this isn't right, this isn't right. And it just kept playing on my mind. I thought, I can't stay in here anymore. I've got to get out of the room. So I got out of the room, went into the corridor, and uh, my dad came out after me, uh, after and came to me. He said, "What's what's going on? What's what's wrong?" And I, and I told him. And I said, "Look, you know, look at this section. Look at this section. You're telling me that we're doing this. You're telling me they're doing that right now." And, uh, all he could say to me was, well, "I don't know." And I said, well, "I said to him, well, they're obviously not doing it." And I just can't be a part of something that isn't scripturally um, accurate or fulfilling. So, looking back, what was it? What was it well, they it were was doing the fact, that wasn't? It was, the fact, it, it was the fact that the teachers and deacons were administering the sacrament, which I know now, which I, which I know not to be the proper thing to be doing. Okay. Scriptures, well, scriptures are pretty clear on it. So, what, what's the what's the correct way? Because for me, well, the, I've I've only ever grown up with that way. So right. what what's the correct way? Well, the doctrine and covenants, I think, is section twenty. Um, I don't want to get the scriptures out and rifle through them now, but in That's section fine. twenty, it tells you who should be administering the sacrament, and the the elders of the church should be administering the sacrament, and it says quite clearly that the teachers and the deacons should not be administering sacrament. Um. The priests can, because it says so in there, but not teachers and deacons. It's quite clear in the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants, and it's quite clear if you go back and look at early church history. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know this now. At the time, I was just looking at the scriptures. If you go back and look at early church history, that just didn't happen. The teachers and the deacons weren't anywhere near the sacrament until, like, you know, the, the, the 20s. So um, for, for me at the time, it was it, it was scripturally inaccurate. This is what I've been told to look for anyway. Okay. And it was just it was just reinforcing what I've been told. And uh, it was now plainly obvious to me that something as, as crucial and as constructive as a sacrament wasn't even being done correct. OK. Fair enough. So from that point on, you didn't go back. No. Um, and you resigned from the church uh so no one no one can be under any illusion that the church hunted you down and kicked you out you oh, chose no, no. to take control and uh resign from the church um and continue on this journey so we get to the third vision which i call this the, the big one in right. july july 2006 yeah uh, tell us briefly about that the 12th of july 2006 um it happened it was the, the, the same format Raphael appeared to me and um, um, took me to um, a place which I later found out that it was a uh, they called it the temple in heaven but it's not it's not it's not forget about your LDS perspective of a temple so it's nothing like that it took me to a, a place and um, in that place, in that that visitation, I, for the first time ever in my life, saw Christ. And um, 
and I saw Joseph Smith and um, I saw another person there who I didn't know uh, which would later come to it, it was Jaranek who was there okay oh yeah I, I had a conversation with Christ and um, I was very aware while speaking to him that I was speaking to him as somebody who wasn't sinless you know I was a sinner I I I felt uneasy about that until he told me that that that's not a problem um, um uh, I forgive you of anything you've done wrong uh, but I'm really I'm really here just to introduce you to uh, Joseph Smith and and be a conduit for that um and then I I saw Joseph Smith and uh spoke with Joseph for a short period and uh he laid hands on me and um and then the prophet Jaranek laid hands on me and that in in tiny <laughs> is the essence of the vision okay and what what did they bless you with okay so um Joseph Smith basically without going too in depth because we'd be here all night, told me that I now had from him um, authority or permission, I think is a better word, um, to uh, act as a, uh, as a prophet, that um, the mantle of a prophet was now upon me through him. Uh, and then uh, Jaranek, who then placed hands on me, basically told me that, that his record was going to come through me and that he was basically blessing me that, that, that that's OK. I, I accept this. You now have authority from me to take, take my record and do something worthwhile with it. So um, I know that's really bare bones, but that's pretty much pretty much. Okay, no. no, that's yeah. fine. Um, so. What did Jesus do? Nothing. Um, uh, well, I was going to say nothing. I mean, you know. I did feel up with a cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, this is Christ we're talking about, isn't it? So uh, for me, um, just the fact that I was able to see Jesus okay. and to, to be in his presence at that time and still now as I think about it is enough for me. And for him to say to me that... Um, you know, you you can be in my presence uh, as as a as a mortal man um, uh, with all of your uh, sins and burdens. You can still be here. We can still ch chat. We can still talk. We can still be in each other's company. Um, I won't I won't go as as far as to say that um, like he, he forgave all my sins or anything like that. But it was just mm -hmm. that. Um, it, it was the opportunity to meet him and okay. to be in his presence. Um, and then, of course, as I said, it, it was just he introduced Joseph. It wasn't like it was like a, a format. Christ came and spoke to me. Then he introduced Joseph. Joseph didn't introduce himself. He waited for Jesus to introduce him. And then Jesus introduced this. Oh, not Jesus. Joseph introduced the other guy who I didn't really know who he was at the time. Um, that, that 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 bare bones is pretty much it really without diving into the i mean you know yeah it's like a, a fantastic tongue twister i met with jesus jesus joseph and jarinek right right, right. <laughs> yeah, i mean and i can understand how, how, how wild that sounds to loads and loads and loads of people like, like, you know i've been dealing with um uh, people saying this is crazy this is this can't happen oh, 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 for for years now so you know, it's nothing new for me Okay, well, as long as you're used to it. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, got to be. I'm, I'm, I'm dressed in red because I'm the devil's advocate tonight. Right. But here's a question that just, just came left field, uh, unplanned question: Was Jesus Middle Eastern? Like, was he um, white guy with blue you eyes, mean, did he, or right, was right. he? Did he um, to of, me? Well, right. was was he of Middle Eastern descent, like uh, um, an Arab from Jerusalem? I've got to be careful here because what are we talking about? Christ in the human form or Christ in his resurrected form? 
So no is the answer. He didn't appear to me as a as a as a uh, as well, a. No, uh, the, in, the interesting thing in the answer then is, does everyone who's not white become white in their resurrected form? I wouldn't know. Um, I, we're playing on, uh, when we talk about white, are we talking about skin colour? Yeah, like, like ourselves. No, I don't, no, no, I don't believe it. I, 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 no, I mean, I, 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 no is the answer. Okay. I, don't but, think, I don't think the skin colour argument is... is uh, appropriate or relevant? I don't okay. think it makes any sense. No, okay. no. So, you've been given this permission, as you say. Now, would you compare it to the the usual trope from LDS? Is the keys of this mm -hmm. dispensation or the keys of the priesthood? Where are no. they? No, no, no. Uh, this is. I mean. No is the answer. I was just told by Joseph that I could now um, uh, go forth from his presence, knowing that he was once a prophet, and he's as he was as he was the last prophet um, in the Restoration era. That um, I could now be given the mantle of being a prophet from him. There were no all these all this stuff about uh, keys and authority. That that that's that's all LDS stuff that um i have i don't i don't I subscribe to well i not in I, the, not in the not in the manner that that the lds do i'd compare it to uh the meeting with joseph smith and oliver cowdery in the kirtland temple when right. the prophets from previous dispens dispensations came through and handed them their keys so right. that joseph held um, the keys for the fullness of times, right. uh, but also on that, um, you exclude that revelation from your doctrine and covenants. So, on one side of it, in the doctrine and covenants uh, in the Kirtland Temple, there are those keys. Right. Supposedly. Okay. Right then, so... Having summarized um, a lot of what I'm trying to get to is having watched a lot of you, um, not not in a sexy or creepy way. No, no, that must be very I promise, disturbing. I promise. Um, you don't believe there's any ultimate authority. You don't believe any church has ultimate authority uh, when it comes to priesthood, and I think in one of your videos, you said you would be happy receiving a blessing from a priesthood holder from the LDS church. Okay. Yeah, any, um, any organization within the restoration, that yeah. they all have elements of truth. Okay. So there's no one true church. You're not saying no. your, your church is the only true church. Definitely what you're not. saying is that the, uh, and we'll, we'll get to this a little bit later, that the restoration is a, a shattered um, mess. Right. Um, and that there's no one true prophet. Right. Yeah, uh, I don't believe in one prophet, one dispensation at one time nonsense because the scriptures aren't are just not like that. So. Okay. So, what does that mean? I guess you like what's your mission? If there's okay. if it's if it's not to raise one true church, it's not to administer one true priesthood and it's right. not to be a single true prophet right. what is your mission in this this time okay so um my overriding mission from as i understood it at the time and still do was to uh take possession of the records of jaranek and to translate them to publish them to disseminate them to fill the world as much as i possibly could with the means at my disposal uh, uh to to anybody who wishes to read them uh, i think i think prophets are given different jobs different things to do in different areas of the world uh, they have different things they need to achieve for me it was uh, uh speaking to christ speaking uh, uh and, and and telling people of that receiving revelation from christ 
of uh, and and of course the the, the plates and uh, pushing pushing that pushing that. So if the LDS Church adopted the the chronicles of the children of Aranek into yeah. the scriptural canon, would your right. job be to complete? Would my job be complete if they add it into their if, no? If they, if they adopted it and and took it um, right. as so, you've been told to bring it forth. Obviously, yeah. you'd continue to to preach it, but hypothetically, if right. they accepted it into the canon and yeah. and accepted, uh, you know, all of your visions, would you then kind of go with them? Because no. you were asked, no, okay, no, no. Because if I did that, that would be like, that would be that would be me going back on everything I've ever said about there being a one true faith. Because just because one other, just because another organisation decides to look at it and go, we'll adopt that into our canon of scripture, um, doesn't make them any truer or more important than any other organisation within the restoration. It just means that they've accepted another canon of scripture into their religious beliefs okay i certainly wouldn't i certainly wouldn't see it as a as a vindication or a completion of the work definitely not okay well i'm not working but as, that, them, as, so... that, as that's not likely to happen I'm not <laughs> <thinking about it. laughs> I'd, I'd i'd agree with you there wholeheartedly uh mark johnson asked and the reason i uh, bring this one up is because i know as well um from you you regret putting things on youtube because i watched it all uh, <laughs> you'll see your views have gone up this week <laughs> <laughs> uh the community of christ so we we were speaking about this restoration and that there's priesthood authority still out there in the restoration but yeah. you don't see the community of christ as being part of that restoration anymore no no i don't no that's the answer i don't i, I think the community of christ have embraced certain religious aspects that are uh diametrically opposed to uh the restoration to joseph smith uh i mean i don't know i mean they don't they don't believe the book of mormon is actually scripture uh so that's very diff no it's very difficult when you when you're taking a a, a keystone element of a religion and saying well it's not really scripture it's just a good book to read uh well you know to be fair to be fair, Tom Sawyer is a great book. What it does is it puts the Book of Mormon into a into a, a category of just any other good book, and um, I think they've sold themselves out. But that that's just my personal opinion. Cool. Well, here's here's another cat amongst the pigeons. Okay. So you can have a blessing from someone from the LDS Church. All right. Does my LDS baptism count? Oh well, yeah, rebaptism stuff like that, right? Okay, good, 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 good question. We don't require rebaptism. Oh, don't you? As... I thought you did. No, no, we. Well, this is when we when. I mean, I've got to shift back a bit here because I'm talking about this, the the organisation of the branch, and um, I yeah. am, I am, um, not closed to being told that some things that i might have believed in in the past um uh can be challenged um when i when when i first left the lds church and we started out on this journey uh i naturally thought that rebaptism would be a necessary thing so um but over time and conversations with god and uh, other people um i've come to realize that um it's not necessary um and i haven't required rebaptism for a while okay. for a long time okay i mean it's not, it's not like a new thing that's just happened last year it, it's been a, a long while uh, well, we had we had some people join back in i want to say 2013 because it was a while ago now and i was very keen because they asked me about the baptism issue and i was very keen to point out to them i don't require it 
But if you want to be rebaptized, I have no trouble doing that. But it's not a requirement for you to become uh, um, a member or uh, for you to get involved. So. Okay. Well, no, that's that's um, good to know because I know that, um, like you say, at the beginning there were rebaptisms, which is why I mm -hmm. assumed that mm -hmm. that was still a uh, a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, no, it's good to uh, to see that we are moving forward. Bear me one moment. I'm just about to try and kick some spammer out of the chat. Sorry, guys, for whoever Love Base X Y Z is um, technical. So whilst I keep doing that, there was a question from Ben Vickery, and that was when all of this was going on and you were setting up your own church and right. not that you were told to set up your own church but that that just kind of happened around it because there needed right. to be somewhere to meet there needed to be somewhere right. to continue um practicing the ordinances of the restored gospel as you saw them um what did your work colleagues think um i, I never i didn't really discuss it no? with 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 um work colleagues um it's just not something that i mean you, you i don't i didn't go into a a, a a business meeting and suddenly start talking about angels and god i mean i was too busy trying to too busy trying to make money you know um and keep 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 a roof over our heads so no it's, just, it's never cropped up really it's okay. never been an issue awesome and when you did set up the church there was um quite a, a quick and heavy lawsuit that came your way because the original name of the church, correct me if I'm wrong, was the Latter Day Church of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they didn't like that. No, no. Um, in fact, um, when we when we organised a branch, um, I want to say like October of 2006. Right. Uh, we went ages and ages and ages and ages without any problem with uh, legal issues from anybody. And then, um, what was it, 2014, 2015, something like that? Uh, 2014, probably about right. I got this, I get this, this contact from the LDS church, I think it's around that date, uh, telling me, I, I mean, it was a massive envelope, you know, it's like this thick. Uh, uh, just telling me to to uh, take down the website, stop using certain things. So uh, we obviously weren't going to take it lying down. Uh, so we we took legal advice and we fought our corner as you would. We spoke directly with uh, somebody in Salt Lake um, at some point. And they okay. said, no, we're not, we're not prepared to back down. And we said, OK, well, we'll have to take legal advice. And we did. And to cut a lot, very, very long story short, we came to an agreement. And so far, touch wood, that agreement's standing up on our end anyway. So, OK, you do have the disclaimer on the front page of your website to make, yeah, make yeah, it very clear um, yeah. that you are not associated with them. And I assume that was something to do with uh, kind of keeping that clear. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there. it was. Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, we we had to make sure uh, that we covered our end and and made sure that anyone who interacted with the website and it's in big red letters on I me, mean, you can't really miss it. That that we have absolutely no affiliation with the LDS Church at all, uh, and. Um, uh all, all i would say about that point that that period in time is it was very stressful um but uh we we came out with terms that we could we could all parties could live with so okay um okay well let's look now at the standard works um within the restored branch Right. Because uh, I know that this was something that the church was trying to get you to cease and desist on and not using the Book of Mormon. Right. Um, because it was their ball and they were taking it home. Right. Um, they they did you... something. They did, they, did, they did something here that they, couldn't, they can't possibly do in America. 
See, in America, it's gone. It's been tried in a court of law, and the the Book of Mormon is public domain, and anybody can use, anybody can print it. Um, it doesn't belong to anybody. Uh, but that's not the case here in uh, Europe. And so we fell foul of European legislation, not American legislation, which I was unaware of at the time, and everybody else that was involved, we were all unaware of it, that they'd managed to do something here that they couldn't possibly do in America. Uh, and, and one of those things was, you know, you can't use the Book of Mormon, and we just couldn't accept that, you know. No. So, anyway. so, so now you use um, the restored covenant edition of the Book yep. of Mormon, which yep. is taken directly from the printer's manuscript. That's correct. Um, so, still has all of the interesting bits. There it is. There it is. Um, in in all its glory. Yeah. Uh, you also use uh, the Chronicles of the Children of Aranek, consisting yep. of the Book of Jaranek and the Book of Rayanek, yep. that we yep. will get to uh, shortly. The doctrine... the there you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Doctrine and Covenants, this is an interesting one. Right. So, on the website, it states that you use the 1835 edition of the Doctrine and Covenants right. because that is the only edition that has been voted on by the congregation of the church um right. and uh past which seems yeah right, right. um and, the, and then you list a whole bunch of sections that you don't accept and you say that they were put there by the utah church in yep. order to legitimize different things with brigham young and yep. uh, and different things that were going on okay right. My yeah. question would be, so I've been through all the sections, and my only, well, my question would be, what makes the exception? Because, so we've got the, if we cut it off at 1835, Joseph didn't die till 1844. So there were revelations still happening for the, the next nine years. Right. The next version of the Doctrine and Covenants came in 1844, and it was announced in... Oh, let me get it right. I want to get it right. Um, so, uh, a notice dated the 11th of June, 1844, and published the next day in the Narvi Neighbor, announced optimistically that a book of Doctrine and Covenants will be published in about one month's time. Right. Uh, and those wishing never to happened, order. Which never happened, by the way. Yeah, it didn't come until September because Joseph and Hiram died uh, later that, that on the 27th of June, later that month. Right. So, but it was in process. It wasn't as, I guess, quick as it is now. It had been years in the process. So my question would be, why don't you use the 1844 version instead of the 1835 version? And why do you use some revelations post-1835 and not others? Like, uh, I'll, I'll just give you the... Section 119 in the LDS version is the tithing section. Mm -hmm. uh, that was given the 8th of July, 1838. Section 124, mm -hmm. um, which was Joseph Smith telling the members to leave Missouri due to the extermination order. And that was the 19th of January, 1841. And I assume they're in there because you've not, Put on the website that they're not there if you know what i mean right right so so I, i've not without, got an actual right without going through the entire doctrine and covenants which would be very tedious tonight yeah. um there are sections in what, what we basically did is we, we basically took the um the 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 basic text of the 1835 doctrine and covenants which we know is the only doctrine and covenants to be uh, re, uh, uh voted on and sustained by the entire body of the church. No other, no other Doctrine and Covenants that happened to prior to uh, post-1835. Okay. Um, um, so we took the basic text of that, okay? And then um, we also included in the Doctrine and Covenants some letters or, 
uh, they call them epistles of Joseph Smith, for example. Um, uh, like, for instance, section 127, an epistle from Joseph Smith, Nauvoo, September the 1st, 1842. Because it's, it's, uh, Joseph Smith wrote it, okay, and there's evidence he wrote it. Um, for example, the reason we don't have section 132 is there's no evidence Joseph Smith ever wrote that. The cert uh, this is this is what I'm saying. I mean, I know people are going to disagree, and then they're going to say, "Well, we know he wrote it, but you know, and it was burnt, and it was suddenly found." And, uh, there's no evidence that Joseph Smith wrote that. Uh, there's no book of there's no there's no doctrine and covenants uh, post 1835 that includes that revelation until the establishment of 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 the what I would call the Brighamite LDS Church. Okay. Uh, which, which, and to be fair, their first printing of the Doctrine and Covenants was done here in the UK. It wasn't done in America, and 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 that's when they took out the section on marriage. That's when they took out the 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 affidavit from the Relief Society about plural marriage. Uh, so the revelations that are not included in the 1835 in our Doctrine and Covenants are revelations that appeared in the i can't remember what it was now don't quote me on this because they aren't exactly my forte i think it was something like the 1856 57 or something like that it's okay uh, I, I think you've answered the question um so i guess what i was looking for was what was your format for hmm. putting things after 1835 into the your doctrine and covenants and something that... that i could go yeah something i could go to for instance the times and seasons which is an exceptional resource okay which was printed by the church uh in joseph's time and you could you could say in the times and seasons that's where that document is now it wasn't put in the, the, the doctrine and covenants because they didn't print a doctrine and covenants it was left in the times and seasons and if you if we that's that's basic format but if we look at the revelations received uh, it, it, most of the the bulk of the revelations, for the Doctrine and Covenants, were received in in Kirtland anyway. I think it's something like what 46, 47, and there was only there's only a handful, uh, three, four that were received in the Nauvoo period. Um, so anyone that says to me, oh, there was a load of revelations after 1835, 1836, 1837, um, I'm sorry, there's no evidence from the times and seasons to back that up, or uh, from Joseph Smith himself. Now, of course, if you're an LDS member, well, you know, all bets are off, aren't they? Because you believe Brigham Young's a prophet, so everything he 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 said, Joseph Smith said, is relevant. Uh, we don't believe that. So, okay. Well, I just have one section I want to ask about, um, okay. and that section. is section thirteen. The Aaronic Priesthood oh, yeah. Restoration. Yeah, so that's, that's Why, not in any of the governments. No. What was the... Because uh, that was like a big thing growing up. Because it uh, wasn't printed, because it wasn't put in the Doctrine and Covenants till years and years and years after Joseph Smith died. This was a revelation that Joseph Smith was supposed to have received very early on in his ministry. I don't know the exact date, but very, very early on. And it never made its way into the first printing of the Doctrine and Covenants. That to me tells me something. Either it wasn't important enough or it didn't exist. And the first printing of that revelation in, in section 13, if I'm correct, and I think I am, didn't occur until the printing of the Doctrine and Covenants in Liverpool. So you're talking about the 1850s. So if this revelation occurred in, say, 1829, 1829, why didn't Joseph, at the time of the printing of the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants, seem relevant and fit to put in the Doctrine and Covenants? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. It never appeared in his lifetime, ever. No, I would agree in, with in, you. In, in, co in codified scripture. I, I would say that it didn't happen, and that's why it wasn't there. Um, okay. That there are a lot of things that happened that came later in the church because you've you have accepted that you're learning as you go and sometimes yep. things change and you're quite happy to do that so sure. i i'm assuming 
that was the same thing. And sometimes, sometimes I think that there was the uprising in the church and there was the possibility of Joseph being overthrown. So Joseph said, I've got this authority from John the Baptist or Peter, James and John, which means that only Joseph then has that authority and he can't be overthrown because not, no one else has got it. Um, sure. So, but we, we move on from the Doctrine and Covenants. Sorry, I said it was going to be a whistle, top, a whistle stop tour. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, the, the Book of Mormon for the printer's manuscript, and then we've got um, the inspired version of the Bible. We've already spoken that this is Joseph Smith's translation. Yeah. Have you come across the sections where because we know that there's a lot of the King James Version of the Bible in the Book of Mormon, almost, uh, right. almost verbatim. Right. So, so there are sections that then tally from 3rd Nephi, when Christ visited the Nephites. We've got um, the words of Jesus in the Americas. Seven then we've got the, this, yeah, yeah, the yeah. same words in Matthew, yeah. but then the inspired version has different words. I don't know what to say to that. I don't. Okay. I don't know what I would. I mean, I, I can. I can probably. I could probably explain um, what Christ was doing using the same language in the Book of Mormon as he did in the, in the Old World, but it would probably be irrelevant to most of your viewers because, yeah. you know, um, all I know, and I will testify to this, is that um, the inspired version of the Bible, although it wasn't printed in Joseph's day. Uh, was due to be printed, and it was a finished, complete manuscript. It wasn't. It wasn't as people think. It was a completed, finished manuscript that was preserved by Emma, and um, I think um, it clarifies a lot of misunderstandings that we find in the King James version of the Bible. What that process was for Joseph, I I couldn't say. Why okay. that process took place, or how it took place. Okay. I don't know, if anyone's ever read the inspired version of the Bible, I, I, even if you're a skeptic of Joseph Smith and the, and the Restoration, I would encourage you to read the whole thing. Because, I mean, just take the Gospel of John, for example. It starts completely differently. Yes. Majorly differently. I mean, it's not just like one or two lines. It's major. And, and the whole, the, the first seven chapters, for instance, of the inspired version are completely different to King James. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, moving on then. Um, a, another omission, I might have just missed it, is the Pearl of Great Price. Uh, yeah. So, book, book of Abraham, Book of Moses, and Joseph Smith history. Right. Okay. Yeah. But we don't we don't use the uh, Book of Moses because we don't need to because it's in the inspired version of the Bible. That's what I thought. Um, um, uh, and then we don't we don't use the Book of Abraham for lots of reasons. And, and Joseph Smith history, we have our own version taken from the Wentworth letter. Yes. The so, Book of Abraham, though. It's problematic for lots of people. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm just, it's, it's one of the, the seminal works of Joseph were the Book of Abraham, Supposedly. the Book of Mormon, Supposedly. and the Doctrine and Covenants. Right. Do you think it, it, someone else wrote the Book of Abraham? I, I mean, just just me. You asking me? I don't believe Joseph had a hand in that at all. Okay. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's what we were asking. So, that's. I don't believe Joseph had a hand in that at all. So. Asked and answered. Um, something I was really impressed with um, was your rejection of Easter. And not the rejection of the holiday, but the fact that you've actually pointed out what we're all pointing out to LDS people every year, that it's a pagan ritual and that Easter was the goddess of new life and that they band around these Easter conferences and things. So you've right. rebranded that new Passover. Yep. And that's, so that's, a, very early, that's a very early thing in the, the organization of the, the branch. Um, of, um, but yeah, I mean, I was basically told by by the Lord Himself, 
this isn't pleasing the way we're doing this. This isn't pleasing to me. It doesn't honour me in any way, shape or form. So uh, it would please me greatly if you didn't and you observed it differently. Okay. Uh, and that's 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 what we we do. We we mark it differently. So, so what about Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, I know that I, I know that the, the name Christmas is uh, a Christian name, but the yeah. the date of the festival, etc., is uh, not a uh, Christian. You know. Yep, I understand that. It's totally totally a pagan festival. I understand that. Well, um, if, if you do change it, make sure that you yeah. put PD on it and say that you got that, <laughs> one. You got that one from me. Yeah, Don't. I'll definitely uh, do that. Don't go saying that Jesus came tonight. It was me. <laughs> no, no. It came from right. you. That's it. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll move on. So they're the, the standard works that you use. I've got a note here on Book of Mormon Geography. You subscribe to the Heartland model uh, rather than yeah. hemispheric. We do. Um, so that the, the Book of Mormon took place in uh, the central the heartland of the eastern united states around right. where uh joseph the hill cumora etc um yes. there are issues yeah. but that's not what we're here to talk about tonight so joseph smith we know that you uh use the wentworth letter for the first vision story so uh, that is um with the two personages and you you also uh i failed to mention earlier the doctrine and covenants for anyone that wasn't aware uh the lds church these days only actually has the covenants part of the doctrine and covenants originally (laughs) the doctrine part was the lectures on faith and it was i think around the 1920s they took the lectures on faith away because they say something problematic for lds um theology and that is about the personage of heavenly father jesus christ and the holy ghost because um being raised mormon a utah mormon we're taught that god has a body flesh and bone so does jesus whereas in the lectures on faith um god is a personage of spirit jesus is a resurrected being and the holy ghost matthew is the, the, the mind identity. yes it's the, the it's, combined it's, mind of the two right. yeah. okay so the holy ghost isn't a personage right. it is when those two become one um, yes yeah yeah so, yeah i mean the, le- the lectures on faith for us are, are paramount to be in there so okay um so you have given uh the priesthood to the sisters am i correct um, yes those sisters that wish it yeah okay and in what form in in, in what would what do you mean which office you mean the the ironic priesthood the marquesic priesthood the uh, there's a question oh, from right. matthew clark he says why only the ironic priesthood for the sisters <laughs> because i was told to only give them the ironic priesthood okay that, that's the straightest answer i can give i'm afraid i was told to give it the sisters who wished it just like anyone who wishes to have the priest. You see, the, the difference between uh, the restored branch of Jesus Christ and lots of other organisations in the Restoration, and especially the LDS Church, is uh, priesthood isn't an automatic right. You don't just get it when you turn an age. Okay. Um, so uh, those sisters that wish to have the priesthood uh, are given the ironic priesthood. That's just because that's what I was told to give them. Okay. All right. Um, someone's asked a question uh, where, and I think this is it's an interesting question because this week BYU are being investigated by the FBI for their treatment of LGBTQ students in the past and the way that they have gone about um, disciplining them for breaking the BYU honor code for being uh, LGBTQ. Uh, I guess, where do you stand on that in the, the restored branch of Christ? Is it have you done what the LDS church has done and split the atom by saying, um, on one hand, you can have same sex attraction and that's not a sin. It's okay. We're not discriminating. 
I'm not asking you to admit discrimination either, by the way. Um, and on the other hand, the action is the sin. Um, so they're, they're playing this politically correct game of um, because they want the numbers, don't they? So where, where do you stand on that? I mean, it's a very tricky issue these days, politically. Uh, um, from a purely religious, spiritual point of view, and from a branch point of view, um, uh, we, we don't, we don't. Uh, uh, for instance, I wouldn't, we wouldn't give uh, the priesthood to LGBTQ uh, members. People, members. Um, uh, I don't want to put this without sounding really mean because I'm not really mean. I don't want to sound really mean. Um, Mate, just it, it's it's there's no beating around the bush tonight. Um, we're both going to be straight and play this with a straight bat. So well, then then the answer would be we consider homosexuality in any form to be a sin. Uh, but I wouldn't stop them from like uh, coming and 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 looking and and and. Uh, you know attending a meeting i wouldn't i wouldn't do any of that but uh um we would consider that that to be sinful okay um That's I've been... the politest way i can put it okay i've been corrected by dj norman that it's the education department investigating byu not the fbi um but for me any american with a badge and a gun is the fbi because i grew up watching hollywood I think um, I think it's one of those issues that the LDF Church have 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 have, have, ha have gone like, well, we need to hedge our bets on this here, yeah. uh, so let's hedge a little bit. And and I would say, well, I'm not hedging. This this is what we this is what we say. This is what we believe. So. Okay, where do you stand on the word of wisdom? Doug Benson asks. Well, pretty clearly, pretty clearly, the word of wisdom isn't given by way of commandment, so it shouldn't be something that is necessary, as it is in the LDF Church, for uh salvation or uh, uh what is it temple worship they do there or whatever i don't know skull yeah i mean if you it's not it's it, we we look at that as as a as a voluntarily as a voluntary code it's not something we rigidly enforce okay um i mean i, I would tell people don't smoke <laughs> it's pretty bad for you um you know and don't don't Try not to do that. Try and live healthily, yeah. But it's not something that we we attach uh, membership to, or 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 anything of that nature, or so, or definitely not salvation to. So. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to start with the difficult stuff. If you need to top up your drink, call someone in because it's about to go rough. I'm joking. It's not a plural marriage, polygamy. Right. Okay. Now. We stand diametrically opposed on the issue. Your what? What's your stance on polygamy? Pretty simple, really. With, um, with, with that, regards to Joseph. With regards to Joseph, pretty simple. Um, that Joseph wasn't a polygamist. Didn't didn't uh, partake of any of those activities. Okay, and the even in, in is it later in the book of Rayanek, the king. Um, who is a bad lad? Uh, one of his evil deeds is polygamy. Yeah, I don't know if he uses the word polygamy, but yeah, he takes many wives. Yeah, takes many wives. Yeah. Um. So that's where you stand on polygamy. I would stand on the other side of the coin and say there's uh lots of evidence to the contrary. So, um, but we know we know uh, where you are. We're not here to argue that point. We don't need to argue any points, but that's not what mm -hmm. tonight's about. It's not a polygamy episode. Um, this is an interesting one that I think uh, I've learned some. The temple ceremony. So you still do practice um, a temple ceremony, if you can tell yeah. us about it. It's not secret. No, no, no. It's not secret. Um, we, we, we basically... Um, practice the the ordinance of washing and anointing that joseph um and the early brethren partook of uh in the upper rooms of the kirtland temple um and and that's just a simple process of of, of washing one's body clean feet washing 
and then uh, anointing one's head with oil and having a blessing. That's as far as it goes. That's it. And it's not secret. Uh, uh, I, I freely discuss that with anybody. Uh, there's nothing in there that, that uh, that's secret or, what do they say, sacred. <laughs> so, yeah. Well. If so you my... wanted to view a temple ordinance of ours, you could you could do that. You might have no problem with it. Um, I wouldn't need nobody needs a special recommend or a pass or anything to get in. So. Okay. Well, my question would be then. Apologies to everyone in the chat. Love face is um, just a bot that keeps coming back this evening for some reason. Thank you to Alana for um, kicking them out. So uh, sorry, Matthew. It's just some random bot keeps spamming the uh, the chat with lots of uh, horrible things. I'm sure. So the temple ceremony, as you described it, is from the Kirtland Temple. Okay. Uh, yes. The Nauvoo Temple ceremony. Yeah. Yes. So there was a Masonic lodge in Nauvoo. Where Joseph became a Freemason, and on the fourth of May, now correct me if you, because I'm sure you've already looked at this, etc. 1842, on the second floor of the Red Brick Store, um, right. he conducted the ceremony in two phases. First, as you said, was the washing and anointing, um, and clothing in the garment. And then there was a testing and instruction section um, that was the story of Adam and Eve and, uh, and some of the, uh, I guess, Masonic rituals. Um, yeah. So they, they, they called it the Anointed Quorum. Supposedly. They did. Yeah. So where do you stand on that? Is that you I just don't think it, it happened? No, no, not no, no. I don't. I don't. Uh, for me to for me to accept that that happened, then uh, I'd have to accept that uh, spiritual wifery happened and polygamy happened, and that Joseph Smith wasn't who he purported to be. So no, okay, he's, yeah. so it's all back together in kind of okay. yeah, because that that anointed core and meeting basically becomes the basis of your LDS temple temple endowment service. Okay. So another, we're still on Joseph, but we're almost done with Joseph. You'll be happy to uh, to know. <laughs> the Council of Fifty. Right. Um, yeah. but Joseph being king of the world. Yeah. I'm king of the world. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, are you reestablishing the political uh, council? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. I, I, don't, I don't plan on being president of the world anytime soon. I've got enough no. to worry about. Okay. Right then. <laughs> um, so now we're going to move, and this will be different for a lot of people. It was different for me when I saw this. Um, there's recently been a documentary produced by Justin Griffin, and, uh, and you can find it on... Um, youtube and vimeo and i will post a link to it as well and i've just taken a short five minute section from it and this depicts uh, a version of what could have happened in carthage jail justin's done uh it's a it's a feature length documentary so definitely go and watch it um to get all of the information i've just taken the conclusion the juicy bit to show tonight because we've we've not got time to watch it all um but sit back for five minutes and enjoy um this if anyone needs a toilet or to get a drink um now's your shot tens of hours researching what happened reading all of the documents reading all of the reports i've consulted with 20 different people including two forensic detectives I reconstructed the entire set to match exactly the measurements of that room at Carthage. And the three main theories that we've covered, which are from the Lyons brothers, Sam Weston, and from Gary Smith. I want to know who really killed Joseph Smith and his brother Hiram. 
what really happened in those two to three minutes at Carthage. Let me show you what I think happened. Holy shnikes. So we had there, let me just hide that quickly. We had there third president of the Utah church, John Taylor, um, execute Hiram Smith. Um, he then got in a pistol fight with Joseph, who was then finished off by Willard Richards, uh, the man from behind the door. And that's a new one to me you know uh, it's, and and 
I guess that would fit with your... Would you say that Brigham Young orchestrated that? or? Well, um, unfortunately, that narrative isn't new to me. I've, learned, I've known about that narrative for many, many years. Um, and there are wonderful books written about that narrative um, that I, I could plug tonight. Um, yes, for me, the orchestrator of the death of Joseph Smith was certainly Brigham Young. Um, obviously, he wasn't in the room, and he used he used two people who um, who didn't need to be there um, to 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 do the job. I think. I mean, I don't know exactly if it if the documentary if that part of the documentary is really accurate, but I think that's probably how how it roughly went down. I certainly think John Taylor lied in his in his uh, in his account, and Willard Richard definitely lied in his account. Um, okay. so yeah, yeah, I have no problem believing Brigham Young could orchestrate that. Okay. Well, following the death of Joseph Smith, obviously uh, the restoration did shatter. Um, and you have Brigham go off to the, the Utah church who, he did change a lot of things. Um, he did change the structure of the church and artificially, um, elevated himself in that structure, um, to eventually be head honcho. But there were people that stayed that could have um, perpetuated the restoration. Uh, so there is talk of a blessing that Joseph Smith gave to Joseph Smith III, right. um, that he would be a successor. And there's also a James Strang, yep. who had a set of plates and witnesses uh, and and revealed the sealed per portion of the Book of Mormon. Right. Why are none of these movements? Why didn't they succeed? If you know what I mean, Joseph. Not well, why didn't they? The, not why didn't right, they that, succeed? That yeah, I mean that's that's a loaded word, isn't it? Succeed, but uh, why weren't they the successors? Well, I don't, I don't see. I don't subscribe to the fact that. Uh, any of them were successes. I think there were more success, successful organisations. Look, if you're measuring success, the LDS Church is miles out there. I mean, success-wise, if, you, if you're talking about members, money, buildings, they are by far and away the best success story in the planet. Oh, no, right? I, I, I think we've got a crossword. I mean, um, not a success as in, like, yay, they won. I mean, like, a success or... Yes, like, no, I don't think... No, I don't think there was a successor. Okay. Um, I, I don't think any of those organisations were a successor to the early church. Um, I, I just don't. I, I just think the saints have proven themselves um, uh, unworthy and inadequate. And um, I believe okay. that, 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 that there was no success. No, no, no successor. I mean, at least these these branches and these organisations set up, and I have no I have no doubt at all that some truth is is involved in them. But I don't call them successors to Joseph in any way, shape, or form. You know, or we're not a successor to Joseph Smith. We're, we're trying to build upon that, but we're not successors. Uh, okay. I think that's a wrong. I think that's the wrong way to look at the restoration. But anyway, that's just my. Problem. Well, I mean, we, we've been, we, we were all brought up with the Book of Mormon where it goes father to son, father to son, if you know what I mean. There was always a, almost a, a, a royal... A lineal, a lineal succession in the Book of Mormon. Yeah, that, that can be yeah. proved in some um, case. So that, that was why, I guess, you've got this um, mindset of that there would be a successor, whether it was the son or someone else. I mean, I think Joseph Smith certainly gave his son a blessing. So I have, I have very, very close friends of mine who are uh, a part of the the now splintered RLDS Church. Um, and, and they're exceptional friends of mine, and um, I just disagree that they believe that Joseph Smith the Third was the guy who was supposed to do it. I, I don't, uh, but we still have a fantastic relationship. We still talk. Um, I think Joseph gave him a blessing. I just don't think he gave him what people consider to be a a successor's lineal blessing. I just don't think that happened. Okay. Regardless of what people say. So. Right then. 
Um, okay, well, we're going to... So we're going to start coming around now to the Book of Jarinek. Um, and I think before we get to the Book of Jarinek... So the Book of Jarinek came out in 2007. <laughs> Not a movie yet. Um, <laughs> but it, um, it was published in 2007. And the book itself... starts at the tower of babel so yeah. i think an, an important thing to understand is the state of the world at the tower of babel so we have um well just a simple question is how old's the earth what was creation for you what is is it well, I'm a creationist. I'm a creationist guy. I'm afraid. Uh, I believe in God, and I believe the creation story. So, um, uh, boo! I don't know what, I don't know what <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm not. Um, I believe in evolution. <laughs> right. uh, but yes, so you are with the six literal days um, that there were no pre-Adamites. Definitely not. No. Um, and I think that that was a big sticking point for me because I really got kind of stuck on the fact that I felt scientifically there was proof for pre-Adamites. So my question was, were those people just, were the bodies of Adam and Eve just the first ones that God put spirits into? Um, and that was my cognitive dissonance trying to do some mental gymnastics into remaining at church and, uh, still believe in everything I'd, I'd been brought up on. Um, but it just, it didn't work out. So, the flood. Yeah. I've got this lovely um, picture, not of the flood. We don't have any pictures of the flood, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, okay. So, for anyone who did seminary, you'll recognize this. You know it? So this is just the basic chronology of the Old Testament that I think is it's useful to us because we can now pinpoint where Jaronet comes in. Right. Um, so we can see here you've got um, Adam and descendants, and then the Old Testament gives us the flood um, around 200 or 2350 B.C., so we're talking we're talking about four and a half thousand years ago okay right yeah so are you what what sort of flood local flood global flood no i'm a i'm a i'm a global flood guy global flood so yeah. literally eight people left um and then following the flood we have uh, I, uh, I don't uh, well yeah okay go on go, go on. on no go on if you got uh, uh, the, I, I do part company with some of my fellows on this. Uh, I, oh, where do I put this? I don't believe that Noah was the only one that survived that flood. I oh, believe he's the only one the Old Testament speaks about surviving that flood. But the Old Testament is only is only a record from a certain point of view of history. Well, that that would bring me to another question because if there were. Um... So the Garden of Eden had, mm -hmm. is in Jackson County, Missouri, according to Mormonism. You still with that? Yeah. Um, yep. So Noah was in Jackson County, Missouri. He was on the waters for nine months, mm -hmm. uh, landed in Turkey, and then the Tower of Babel pops up in modern-day Iraq. Right. Uh, that's That's like 50 say a hundred years later to be generous right um, and that's where we find the beginning of the book of jerinac which is where we're going to go now everybody i know everyone's waiting an hour for it sorry guys we're <laughs> gonna we are getting um to the crux of this now so the book of jerinac um in 2007 mm -hmm. you went outside and there was a box on the floor no you tell me the story okay so um we had the the, the records delivered in september of uh, 2006 okay 
In the box. Um, in the box. Tiny, tiny little box. It wasn't like a big box. It was tiny, tiny little box. Okay, I've done an artist impression of the box. Let oh, yeah. Me, uh, let me... You, you tell me how accurate I am, all right? Okay. Now, this is, this is like me wasting my time in Photoshop. <laughs> Here's the box. And the reason I put the stars on is because there is a, a, a revelation later um, yeah. published about the box from Phil, uh, Philip Gill, second elder, um, in November 2021, about yeah. the, the stars on the box representing the five houses of Jerinac, and yep. the uh, smaller stars representing their attributes. But yes. was I even close? Uh, like half Go. that size, half that size. Well, it was uh, a tiny box, a tiny box. But yeah, okay. I suppose it wasn't that color. It was really, 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 really dark, dark brown. But yeah, that was it was a, a bit very worn. tiny, very tiny box. Uh, Just on the doorstep. Uh, well, uh, we are, I have to be clear here because I didn't see the records get delivered. I was upstairs. Uh, okay. The first I saw of the records were in my father's hand in the hallway downstairs. And I was told uh, by my father and by uh, my wife uh, what they discovered. So as far as that goes, um, I didn't witness that personally. Uh, okay. My father took the box. My father, my wife opened the door. She she was go. We were we were about to go home. She opened the door, and she she saw this box on the on the the the, 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 the doorstep. Yeah. And and obviously she was like Phil, you know. Uh, so he came and p picked it up. My my dad does say uh, that he saw he saw. Uh, someone in a, a purple robe walking away. So, uh, okay. but um, I didn't see. I didn't see that. I didn't see any of that. Okay. Well, in the box were uh, twenty-four plates of copper. Yeah, brass. Yeah, brass. Are the other yeah. ones uh, and ten copper plates. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. And the and the twenty four plates held the uh, history and story of the time of Jerinac, Jerinac, and yeah. the ten the ten plates held the religious practices of right. um, Jerinac. Right. So, yes, um, and the uh, the engravings were written in Adamic, yes, um, because they came from the Tower of Babel. Yeah, and you translated them uh using these translators again artist impression um these spectacles mm -hmm. uh were they anything like that no uh, <laughs> no it was it was worth a stab in the dark wasn't it what what were they like um i don't know um well firstly they were huge like okay big round and they were joined together uh, by like a, I don't know if you've ever seen an old pair of like medieval glasses with a, like an arch, like a like an arch in the middle. Okay. Um, yeah, go on. And yeah, um, but they were big, and they had um, markings and engravings on them. Uh, the middle was wrapped in leather. Uh, um, that's pretty much it, really. Did you ever and, think that? That someone had just left you, like was taking the mick, and had left you uh, a uh, like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like no. you, you were looking around, thinking, um, "Come on, guys." <laughs> no, because uh, I mean, yeah, no, no because uh, previously to getting the, the 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 plates, we had been called to Stonehenge in August of that year um, to to go to Stonehenge. Um, and we received information at Stonehenge that confirmed to us that the records will be delivered at, at, a, at a certain point at a certain time. So for me, for me anyway, it was it was just a natural uh, uh, process, uh, and I knew I knew I knew what they I knew that they were special the moment I held them. 
So you no were, is the answer. Yep. You were expecting them. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, um, nobody else knew anything about it. So. Oh, fair, fair dues. So what? Well, if we just flick back across, we've got the uh, Yerinak here. This is not not my artist impression. This is your artist impression um, yeah. of Yerinak engraving yeah. the plates there. Yeah. Um, at his nice Chippendale desk. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like you, about that picture. You really. want to talk to your artist? Uh, I am. About, we don't use that. that. We don't use that guy anymore. So. No, and, uh, no. and the ca the candles are interesting, and the books. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. Jerinak is sat in an old library <laughs> somewhere uh, down in London, yeah. and uh, he's just nipped forward in the future to take a photo. Right. Uh, so okay, <laughs> so the translation process. This yes. is what we want to understand. So here we're pictured Joseph Smith's translation process. We know the LDS Church has purported this fantasy for yeah. many years yeah. about the Urim and Thummim and the fact that oh, he did it from the plates when we know from contemporary accounts now from uh, Emma, Martin Harris, that sometimes the plates were in the forest um, and not, not even in the building. And right. that Joseph used the rock in the hat uh, the the seer stone that he'd previously used for other things um so joseph didn't need the plates did you um it's not a competition either i'm not uh, that no, sounded no, like no. it came out as a challenge no, but no i had the plates all the time okay but there wasn't That's... there wasn't a point where they weren't there so okay so did you was it just at the kitchen table uh, was, you sat around. It was, it was at the dining room table. In the dining room, there was myself present, uh, Phil, and another gentleman was present. And um, the plates were on view. They were there. So. Okay. I would speak. They would write. If I was going too fast, they'd say, slow down. Can you repeat what you just said? Go back a line. Don't understand that. Uh, there'd be times in the translation process where I wouldn't understand I, I wouldn't understand what they were trying to communicate. So I would see something like a, um, a scene of an event and I would describe the scene of the event and they would write that down. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So you literally see through the translators. Yeah. Uh, the engravings, would they change? I'm, I'm just okay, trying to so, imagine. Yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, I would put the translators on and um, going from right to left, um, a, a word or a phrase would appear above at, a, a, at the symbol, whatever the symbol was uh, in, in English or the closest English comparison to it. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm devil's advocate again. Why didn't you take a photo? <laughs> I've been asked that so many times. Like you, you could. It, it would have been a slam dunk to yeah. have like, and, and the the to have a sample of Adamic of the actual engravings. You know, even if you, Joseph, we've we've got some impressions of what Reformed Egyptian was apparently, um, but in. This I say this day and age, you know, with cameras everywhere and different things. What did it never cross your mind to uh, document it in that way? No, it never crossed my mind to whip out my camera phone because we're talking about 06 here, so this is really early. But no, it never occurred to me to whip out a digital camera or anything and take a photo. Just like it didn't occur to me when Moroni or Raphael was there to say, "Hang on a minute, I just want to take a photo just to prove I've seen an angel." Well, uh, no. Just didn't have, just didn't, have, just didn't, it didn't occur to me. It just wasn't something I was, you know, in the mind to do. So. Okay. Uh, so uh, there were three of you there, uh, yep. two scribes, and you as yep. translator. Yep. There are the witnesses of the scribes in the front of the book of Jerinak. Yep. Yep. Uh, and there's the witness of um, your mother. Yep. This one threw me a little bit. Because uh, in the witness from your mum, mm. she says that um, your that Philip asked her to put a cloth 
over her face. Right. right. And then she could feel the translators and the plates. Right. right. Was that a, like a commandment or? I don't... Um, no, no, no. I mean, uh, firstly, when we had the plates, I wasn't told to. I wasn't told to show them to anybody other than the people that were going to be involved with the, the translation process. Okay. And then of course, and of course, those closest to you know family and and people, they go well. You know, what are they? Can we see them? And um, all I was told was that they they. My mum, my mum could hold them and feel them, and but she she wasn't permitted to see them. Uh, I don't know if it's well. I know it wasn't exactly as she wrote down in her testament. She put a cloth over it. It sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? Uh, it wasn't like that. Uh, she just wasn't allowed to see them, okay. uh, but she could feel them and handle them and touch them. But she just wasn't allowed to see them um, at that period. Okay, so plates in the box, translators in the box, anything else? dust no the two sets of plates and the translators that's it okay so you did the translation and then where did the plates go then well we kept well we did we kept hold of the plates obviously until all the work was done which took about 10 sundays so we finished in like the december of 06 because we only translated on a sunday so after after meetings and stuff so um during that period the the, the plates stayed with my dad um i wasn't comfortable uh like transporting them in the car and stuff so we decided to just leave them with my dad and he would he would take care of them and you know until we did the translating on the sunday and after the translation was done um they weren't kept for very long until they were till they were taken okay bye by the angel Okay, Raphael. Or... Yes, they were taken by okay. Raphael. Okay, right then. Well, let's get to the uh, <laughs> the the story or the account as written by uh, Jarinek upon the twenty four plates. Now, uh, we're talking the Tower of Babel, so we're talking uh, the time that the Jaredites were. Um, and they had now. All right, <laughs> I'm going to say this it shouldn't sound disrespectful, disrespectful. But at any point, did you start drawing parallels as we go through this bit of the story? Yeah. My mind goes to so many parallels with the Book of Mormon or other things. Yeah. At any point, did you think, <clears throat> no, nope, this is this is too like the same or? Well. If you read the narrative uh, in the book of Jaronek, uh, Aronek, the, the father of the, of, of the nation, he knows the brother of Jared. Yes. And they meet and they meet and they go to the tower. So, it, I mean, it didn't it didn't it didn't it didn't like scream out to me at the time. Oh, this is very similar. It's just that I, I just naturally thought well, if they know each other, then this makes sense that it would be similar. This this little bit um so okay. well, we'll, the answer. we'll see as we go and uh okay. and you can uh yeah i'll okay. i'll point things out you can point things out so okay. the the book starts with aronek um shiblon mahonrai and jared yeah. so mahonrai moriankama was the brother of jared in the jaredite account in the book of mormon who yep. originated at the tower of babel uh, so they call the people of Nimrod to repentance. Um, and then they knew that the Lord was going to confound their language. Now, in the book of Jaronek, it says that Aronek prays that his language won't be confounded. And the Lord spares him and he spares uh, the people of Mahonrai as well. Right. So, but I was a little confused there because in Ether, it says that uh, Jared prayed to God uh, for the same thing and right. was spared. So right. are we just saying that they were they were all covered um, and sorted? 
yeah. and we know but we know that Mahonrai and Jared went one way yeah and Ar Aranek heads with his people north um, right so again this is my artist impression everyone <laughs> a very hours of work um, <laughs> so these lovely footprints uh show so we've got the Tower of Babel here in Iraq uh, the footprints start heading north um, to the Caucasus Mountains, and they're following a cloud of light. Okay? Yeah. And yeah. is this why they're called the people of the light? Yes. Okay. They're following a cloud of light, and then they get so far, um, and this cloud, um, the Jesus Christ appears in the cloud. Right sticks out his hand and in his yeah. hand is yeah. a ball um yeah. probably nothing like what i've got here uh yeah. but the the ball and then there's a ball inside the ball and yeah. on the interior ball are instructions for navigating by the stars right okay yeah the leahona did, um, did that not jump out to you no, no, I mean, no, I, no, okay. I don't know. Well, no, no, it didn't jump out at me like, oh my gosh, it's very simple. No, it just didn't, it didn't, didn't jump out to me like that. Okay. No. Well, no. they 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 cross the mountains to the north, and then after they cross the mountains, it all goes a bit pear shaped, um, yes. because we have murmuring. Um, basically, Arunek is leading his people um, to uh, a land that has been promised to them yeah. um and the eldest son lionek now yeah. something to remember that the title i gave this episode was putting necks on the line and that was kind <laughs> of a, a bit of a pun because uh, all of the people at this point uh have a suffix on their name of neck yes um so it's it's definitely um something that you'll see everyone's called neck at this point yeah. because yeah. it's it's like ragnarsson or i think you've used in the past kovacic you know yeah. um yeah. so that's that's why so the real name might be something like shara and you yeah. just put the neck on anyway right right so lionek um rebels and he takes a third of the people to the east mm -hmm. yeah a third right. of the host of heaven <laughs> okay yeah no, um yeah, <laughs> he breaks he breaks aranek's heart and aranek dies at this point okay and yeah. uh sharanek is called as the new prophet right but pl plot twist sharanek has no tongue right um so he has a brother called Hajinek, who is his mouthpiece okay sure yeah so uh they're told by the lord that as they go they should leave stone monuments to uh lead lead the way yep. um and they get a little bit lax in that as they go across uh sure. europe for 150 years now that my, my question was there because I couldn't figure it out in the book of Jaranek in chapter. Mm -hmm. Let's have a quick look. Where have I put it? Chapter. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, everyone. I, I am um, getting the thighs of a broken heart. <clears throat> Let's go with chapter three um verse get to it apologies everyone i've read so much this week my mind is uh <laughs> full to the brim so chapter three uh strange and mysterious lands to the west Let me find. Five hundred horses. Okay. Behold, uh, so, sorry, chapter 
four. Yeah. Um, verse two. Yeah. So uh, the people of Aranek journeyed westward for many years, and Sharonek and Hajinek uh, had many children, even 30 between them. Yeah. And then behold, Sharonek and Hajinek, in the 150th year, gathered the people mm -hmm. together on the shores of the yeah. sea, the land westward. Right. So my question was, what is that 150th year from? Uh, the way I understand it, it's the 150th year from them um, leaving the tower. Okay. So um, we, what the the, the 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 confusing thing about the book of Jeronek and 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 to be fair, you know, I translated it, and some of it's still very mysterious to me. Um, is I get the impression from reading it that they measured time slightly differently to us. I don't know how or why or in, in what manner, but I. I, I believe, well, I know they did. They measured time differently to the way we measure a 24 hour day or, or a 12 month year. Okay. I was going to say because uh, the children of Israel have got nothing on uh, Sharon yeah. and his gang yeah. because 100, yeah, I mean, 150 years to cross Europe. If, yeah, if, if you're asking me whether it took them literally 150 years as we understand it today, I would probably say no. Okay. Fair enough. So they um, they get to the west coast of France in yep. Brittany um, yep. at Karnak. Um, and if, if we just look quickly here, you can see a stone monument um, that you say they're left behind. These mm -hmm. standing stones at Karnak. Um, and they were left in place of the forest that they cut down to right. build their ships. Mm -hmm. um, but... Here in Karnak, so they're here for a little while in Karnak, um, and Jesus visits, yep. and he blesses Sharonek to never taste death. Yes. So we have another immortal on our hands, um, yep. and he also blesses Hajinek to die, poor kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but... <laughs> Um, I think he's ill anyway. If you if if you look closely, I think Hajinek's ill anyway. He is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he already says I think before that he's he's on his last legs. In yeah. fact, no. In fact, what happened was, um, Hajinek couldn't use his arms or legs or speak, and for that reason, mm. Sharonek couldn't speak because he didn't have a tongue. Right. Uh, so for two years, the prophet couldn't speak. Then Jesus came. Uh, blessed Hajinek to be able to speak briefly before he was to expire, and right. then blessed Sharonek to have a tongue so that he could then speak. Right. Um, I told you, I've read it. <laughs> um, and uh, so then, but Jesus, uh, I guess, prophesies here, the pre-mortal Jesus, he says mm -hmm. to Sharonek, who will never taste death, that yep. um, you will be at my birth with gold at my right. first coming. And that yep. you will be at my second coming on the Mount of Olives, so right. that he will he will uh, never taste death all the way to the second coming. Yep. Um, so, and eventually later in the story, Sharonek does leave um, to go east, uh, which would fit with going to uh, the birth of Christ eventually. But as well, I've heard mention from yourself that you thought there were Nephites at the birth of Christ. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. How'd they get there? The Nephites. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay. I, I have no idea. I mean, I think, uh, um, if you, I mean, it depends. You know, obviously, this is all relevant if you believe the Book of Mormon is true. I certainly think the three Nephites, uh, not the three Nephites. What am I talking about? I was going to say they're after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I certain, yeah, not the three Nephites. I'm talking. I'm thinking of somebody else in the Book of Mormon. I can't put my hands on. Um, I certainly think there were people from the Book of Mormon anyway that were at the okay. birth of Christ. At some point, um, okay. how they got there, how they got there, I have no idea. Well, let's fast forward slightly. Yeah. Um, so uh, they they the Lord tells them to cut a thousand logs. They right. murmur, and the Lord does what He does best and tells them, "Right, you sh shut up, cut two thousand logs now." So they cut down <laughs> the whole forest and they yep. they build these ships, but 
before they build them, an angel appears to teach them how to build the ships. The angel brings back the orb yep. um, and a mitre. Yeah, um, I don't know what that is. Uh, that's a mitre. Yeah, um, people have asked me what this is before. I think it was a stick to measure length and width with. Um, I have never seen. I, I did, when I was translating, I didn't see or have an experience of what that might look like. But I, I get the impression from the text that it was a, a stick of some sort to measure length and width and to okay. measure width somehow. Okay. Okay. So well. The ships were 100 meters long, um, and uh, they set sail. Now, do you remember the story of the journey of the Nephites or Lehi and his family across the sea? Yeah. All right? Yeah. They tie up Nephi, and Nephi, <laughs> yeah. the Leahona stops working, and right. Nephi has to go up top and plead with the yeah. Lord um, yeah. and calms the storm. The people of the light go for 10 days with good wind. Yeah. And then the wind stops. Yeah. Sharonette goes up on top. Right. Um, and pleads with the Lord. Why have yep. you abandoned us in the sea? Right. Right. Um, the Lord tells him he's not abandoned him. It gave him all the tools. So he holds up the orb. Yeah. And the, the orb then spins and shows to go northeast, which yep. is this random course correction that i've got in um yeah. heading northeast um to where they they land in the, the sacred isle um, yeah. and then the story continues from there so they yeah. would have landed there around probably if they left 2500 bc i know we're, we're only counting in the the years that we can count in because we don't yeah, know sure. what they counted yeah, yeah um and then the story goes on from there so it's there are striking for someone who only knows the Book of Mormon. Yeah. When I was reading it, if I'd have taken the names and the places out, I could have been reading the Book of Mormon. Right. If you know what I mean, the language and different things. But that's you know, I said I was going to play it with a straight bat. Yep. Um, that's where I got to. I just thought it just felt like um, it felt very familiar, if you know what I mean. Right. Um, right. There were some parts where I thought that was from the temple. Um, and you, I guess it could be that, you know, oh, oh God, hear the words of my mouth was um oh, what adam yeah. said yeah you know? i never thought of the temple, I never, the temple uh, never, i never thought of that still no. well it's it's just because i'm reading it from the point of view i mean for you if you were reading it through translators it's very yeah. different isn't it um yeah. i'm just reading it from a layman's point of view um yeah. who was kind of grown up in that milieu mm -hmm. um but yeah so the book of jaronek is finished in 2007 yeah and then we move on fast forward to 2015 ah oh. that's a long period yeah yeah but uh da, 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 da. someone is blessed to not taste death until they have delivered the record yeah who's that that's uh ryanick that's the son of jaronick there we go Yes. So, did he deliver the record? Because it, it was the one in the one in twenty fifteen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah saw him, took the record from him personally. Okay, and that was on. I know we discussed before, kind of a parchment. Um, did yeah, did, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not paper. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I would I would describe it as very leathery feel. Yeah, like a, a vellum. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not paper. Yeah, the closest okay. I can think. So I'm, I, mean, I don't know. I'm not a, an expert, but the closest I can think of what it would look is, is parchment, which yeah. is made up of other different things. Yeah. Okay, 
awesome. So um, that came in 2015. And yeah. was, was the translation process, I guess, the same as previous? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I don't think there was any... There were, it was me again. There was two people. Uh, yeah, it was exactly the same. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there was nothing. There was nothing different. I'm just I'm trying back. to wrap my brain because it's a long no, time since things happened. So, yeah, but no, no, nothing was different at all. Exactly the same. Okay, cool. And that went back um, with Ray and Eck again after it was. Uh, after it was translated and, yeah. and finished and stuff, yeah. Who could presumably now lay down and die? Could presumably, yeah. I've poor got chap. no evidence for that, but yeah. Poor he chap. could presumably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, poor lad. He'd been waiting all these years. I know. Oh, um, what's he been up to? I know. But the... So, okay. <laughs> there were other people in the UK when they got there. So yes. We, there's there's no, you know, argument against DNA and different things like that. Um, <clears throat> the Mormon Church for 200 years, whatever it might be, you know, everyone was a Lamanite. Pacific Islanders were Lamanites and different things. Right, right. And then DNA came along and they changed their mind. Um, yeah. But we've, we've not got that problem here um, because it was a milieu of uh different tribes and lineages anyway yeah. um in the book there's at least there's at least three distinctive separate people groups that it mentions in the book and four four actually if you count lion x yeah and it mentions um a library of one yes. of these people now the it library speaks, of Nimbo. yeah it's, it speaks in the book about yourself um the servant mm -hmm. that will um mm -hmm. come before the second coming um, right. and it, it speaks about you <clears throat> being the one to translate uh, those records right so is there more to come well as i said the other day it's a it's a it's a continual ongoing process um there, I mean, un unlike the Book of Mormon, where, you know, there is an actual stop date, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Joseph didn't really get anything else, really. Um, it's an ongoing process, an ongoing work. So uh, I've always viewed it that if the Lord has something that he wants us to have that adds to the story and the narrative and the, 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 the culture of these people, that it would come forth. So I'm open to the fact that there would be other records or testimonies to come forth, yes. Okay. Well, there's only one more. So for anyone um, that wants to go and look, go on the Facebook page for the Restored Branch of Jesus Christ. And I've, I've been through loads of it, and there's all different revelations. Um, how many sections have you got in the Doctrine and Covenants now? Now? Yeah. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. About two hundred. Okay, and uh, there was only a hundred and one that you, I guess, carried forwards from eighteen thirty-five edition and supplementary uh, revelations in Joseph's uh, that, right, that were right. that you felt were provable. So yeah. that's ninety-ish um, yeah. revelations. Mm -hmm. that you've added mm -hmm. and we obviously we've not got time to go through all of them um yep. but on track uh with what is going on in the world today yeah we've got um the revelation from the 3rd of July 2020 and that was a revelation with the angel Uriel um where and I thought it was interesting because you've got Boris and Trump in there uh, so yeah. correct correct me if I'm wrong. Uh you you go to the inside of a tower um and there's shelves all around. It's a round room. Yeah. And on the shelves uh hourglasses, each yeah. hourglass has a year tag on it. Right. 
Right. Um, and Angel Uriel takes you to the top. And at the time, obviously, it's 2020. So the yeah. last hourglass has 2020 on it. Yeah. And in the top half of the hourglass is the future. And in the yeah. bottom half of the hourglass is the past. Right. Um, and it was obviously showing the pandemic and different things and mm -hmm. uh, what was going on. Mm -hmm. But I just love that Boris was in it. And, uh, and Trump was in it, wrapped in their flags. And <laughs> no, you, well, you mentioned yeah. you've got you've got the the commies coming, um, and the red flag, yeah, because yeah. China is taking over, right? Um, so yeah, I thought that was that was a good one. Um, and there are yeah. more revelations to come. Um, yes. there are revelations that have been received, one by your son. That isn't yes. yet published because it's not time yes. yet, um, which is will be eventually. I only, I, only ever, I only ever publish revelations when mm. people are ready for them to be published. If they're for somebody else, there's okay. a lot of revelations in the doctrine in our doctrine and covenants that were given to other people. Um, that you know, I ask permission. Is this okay to go in? They go yes or no. And if they say no, it stays out. It's as simple as that. Okay. Awesome. Well, you'd be happy to know that's my last uh, page of notes. Um, I, that that is the grilling. Um, you survived. You are still laughing, and you haven't hung up on me. I'm so still here. I, I would take that as a win. Um, thank you, everyone that has stayed with us, and for everyone who I know people will be watching this over the weekend um, who are at work right now in the United States. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for being with us. But I, I promised myself, um, Matthew, that I would give you this opportunity on priesthood dispatches because someone always said to me, what would you say if you were in a, a lift with one of the 12 or with, with Russell M. Nelson? And I said I'd turn to them and I'd say, this is your chance uh, to just be real with me and just like say, you know, yeah, it's just a business. I'm not saying yours is just a business, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to here on PD, uh, you can you can just say, got ya. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do no? that. No, all cool. right. Well, I gave you the chance. You know, um, it's, <laughs> you know, we weren't we weren't here to prove who was a prophet, who wasn't a prophet. What we were here to do was to hear from Matthew. Um, rather than hearing from other people um, about the restored branch of Jesus Christ. And I know that you're a home church um, and that, you know, no one's as big as the megalith that is um, the LDS Corporation. Um, but as I understand it, you do have members around the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have affiliates. I call them affiliates because they they can't come out. They can't come to my home church every week, so they they do their best by listening to the sermons and the lessons, and then talking to me every you know week or keeping in touch. And um, I've had to handle that very differently to the way you would handle it in a normal organisation because you know my message isn't just in the UK. It's it's in America. It's in Australia. It's in Europe. It's, you know, I get people contacting me from everywhere and I can't say to them, oh, yeah, you come to the UK for Sunday. Uh, so um, those who are abroad or not in the UK or can't come, like there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a wonderful brother in Preston that's ill that he can't get down here every Sunday. Um, and uh, I, I like to call those affiliate members, really. Okay, yeah, and, and that's what uh, Alana was asking. Um, okay. I guess how many... How many branches and members um, you've got? But I'm guessing, as it's home church, it's a virtual branch. Oh yeah, it's tiny, tiny. Yeah, and and you only practice tithing on your surplus. We do, yeah, yeah, Boom. yeah. That's it, yeah. Um, PD, I'll take ten percent of everything you've got, but Matthew only <laughs> takes it on your surplus. Uh, right. which is fantastic. Uh, the LDS church with their 150 billion smackers um, can give me mine back because I need to feed my children first. Yeah, and the money I paid them as well. So. Yeah, <laughs> didn't we all? Okay, well, mm. thank you, Matthew. 
uh, for being so candid with us this evening, for putting up with me. I know at times it's been two hours and you can have been, you could have hung up at any time. At one point, I really thought you were going to, but you, you stuck with us um, and we got through it. So thank you. Thank you everyone for watching. Again, uh, if you do want to contribute to the show, uh, you can leave a tip using the QR code or the uh, link in the description below. But have a great evening, have a great weekend, and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone.